हाय राधिका हाउ आर यू हाय हाय सर आई एम गुड हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड आई एम गुड राधिका हैव यू प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर द वाइवा यस वंडरफुल वंडरफुल राधिका एंड विल स्टार्ट राइट अवे प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ ओके माय नेम इज राधिका आई एम फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड करेंटली आई एम स्टेइंग इन यूके स्कॉटलैंड Okay. and i uh, i completed my masters in civil engineering okay. but uh, i didn't get job here so uh, i am planning to switch the domain okay. and so okay. i started preparing for uh, software testing here wonderful wonderful radhika and it's a good field too yeah yes thanks friend um completely new new to me yeah sure sure <laughs> thanks friend yeah. and uh, um when it comes to acceptance testing Yeah. Uh, do you know the types of acceptance testing we have yes uh, please explain uh, briefly about it yeah acceptance testing is a end to end testing where uh, the customer or the tester from the software company mm -hmm. test uh, on the basis of real time business scenario mm -hmm. and there are four types of acceptance testing one is done by the customer Okay. the testing is done by the customer the mm -hmm. second one is done by the tester in the software company okay. and third one is beta release Okay. And what the, in which the beta version of the app is released uh, to the some amount of customers to get a feedback. Okay. And third is beta testing. Beta testing is uh, testing of the beta server, which is similar to that of the production server, but the traffic is not real here. It is okay. created by the technical team. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, when it comes to beta release, yeah. in what type of environment will it be? Uh, will the beta release be done? uh it is uh, the environment is a uh, beta environment um, okay wonderful yeah. uh, can it be also called as pre production or pre prod environment yes yes it can be called as wonderful wonderful okay um no can you differentiate between smoke testing and sanity testing yes okay. yeah. smoke testing is a uh, testing the basic and critical feature of the app Okay. Uh, it's like a casual testing, like a general health checkup. Okay. Whereas sanity testing is a, a a type of regression testing which is na narrow or uh, deep. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a specialized health checkup kind. Okay. And smoke testing is done before getting the build. Okay. Uh, and sanity testing is a uh, uh, smoke testing is done when the build is unstable. Okay. And sanity testing is done when the build is stable. Okay. And uh, smoke testing is um. Contains only positive scenarios. Okay. Sanity testing contains positive and negative scenarios. Wonderful. Smoke test must be documented. Uh, sanity testing can be or may not be uh, documented. It's not mandatory. Okay. Then, uh, uh, then smoke testing uh, can be done by developer or tester. And uh, but sanity testing is mostly done by testers. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's clear. wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, now, uh, can you tell me the types of regression testing? Yes. A regression testing uh, is testing the unchanged part of a uh, uh, unchanged feature because of a changed feature, mm -hmm. and uh, the it can be due to uh, adding a feature, removing a feature, code mm -hmm. modification, fixing a bug. Mm -hmm. And types of regression testing are uh, unit regression testing, mm -hmm. uh, in which a uh, only the changed part of the feature is tested, okay. and the second one is. Uh, Regional regression regression testing, wherein the changed part as well as the unchanged features of the app is also tested based on the uh, impact it created, and okay. it is decided by uh, after the impact analysis meeting. Okay. And third one is full full regression testing. It is done when the after the impact analysis meeting, the developer tester and the project manager fail to uh, locate the impacted area, mm -hmm. so they will do the full regression testing. Okay. Uh... Can you tell me how an impact analysis meeting happens? Yes, impact analysis is, is uh, done when, uh, uh, like, uh, the tester feels like you have to test the unchanged uh, another features also, not the changed feature. Mm -hmm. So he calls the tester only calls the developer, uh, the project manager, or the business analyst, and he discuss about uh, which all areas. get impacted and okay. they will give the feedback uh, uh, developer and the project management and tester also add his own ideas mm -hmm. and finally he will come up with the uh, a, a idea of which all area is impacted and he will do the test on that features wonderful wonderful radhik um now we have this impact analysis meeting and uh, in in impact analysis meeting we do it after the regression testing or 
we do when do we do the uh, impact analysis meeting before or after the regression testing it's before the uh, regression testing okay it's done before the regression testing yeah. and when it comes to automation testing yeah. what type of testing you think it's uh, you think well is well suited for automation testing when when in all the other functional testing that's available what type of testing is most suited for automation automation yeah Uh, I, I didn't get okay no we have lot of functional testing right component yes, component testing integration yes, integration testing. testing yeah mm. among this testing yeah. what kind of testing is best suited for automation let's say we are working in a man in in a manual in a, in a, as a manual testers and mm. if someone asks us if this particular testing can be automated what kind of testing would you choose that to be it's a regression testing may you know why uh it can be automated regression testing okay. but uh, retesting and all it cannot be automated it can have to be done manually okay uh, can we say that when it comes to regression testing since we are will getting a, we'll be getting a new uh, build and we'll run the whole regression suit so that the repetitive tasks when because of its repetitive tasks the nature of its repetitive task can we say it can be automated It, it's well suited for automated. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. That's exactly what regression testing is. Now, um, what do you mean by bug bucket? Bug bucket is a bucket where uh, all the bugs are present, which is not fixed in any sprint, mm -hmm. uh, which can be low severity or low priority. Okay. Mm -hmm. From which only they will uh, choose uh, uh, in the next coming sprints uh, which bu uh, which bug should be taken uh, okay. for fixing. Yeah. Okay. um what is the meeting you told that from the bug bucket they decide up which bug will be taken right what kind of meeting is that it's a bug triage meeting okay uh, it's uh, da, uh, it's done by qa lead okay. uh, test lead he calls the um, uh, scrum master and they both only decide uh, which bug uh, which bugs should should be taken up in the coming sprint it okay. happens in between four to five sprints okay okay and why do you think uh bugs go into bug bucket because it's of low severity and low priority is if that the of, one uh, yeah please go on go on yeah if it's of high severity means it it will uh, affect the customer business workflow okay. then it should be fixed uh, yeah. immediately mm -hmm. and if it's of high priority means it it also it should be fixed immediately okay. but if it's of low severity and low priority it can be kept aside and taken up after some time so mm -hmm. so only it is kept in a bucket for the later purpose here yeah. okay wonderful can we say that um let's say we have a we have some tasks we have we have taken up some tasks to be completed in a particular sprint sprint okay. and due to time constraint due to time constraint because of time constraint the main reason being the time constraint we are putting some bugs aside for our next sprint can we say that uh yes it can be okay wonderful okay. now um okay we saw about bug bucket What is the difference between functional and non-functional testing? Functional testing is testing the functionality of the application. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, component testing, integration testing, uh, etc. And non-functional testing is uh, testing the uh, attributes of a application, such as its uh, performance, like performance testing, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, reliability, compatibility testing, etc. And uh, compatible uh, no functional testing uh, is a mandatory test you have to do that okay. and non functional test is for the customer satisfaction purpose only it's not mandatory to do and uh, functional testing can be done uh, manually but non functional test uh, is mostly done with the help of a tool like performance testing we use jmeter uh, like that then yeah that's it okay now you told that non functional testing are not that mandatory when compared to functional testing Yes. i'll give you a scenario let's say we have an e-commerce application and yes. e-commerce application we have done our functional tests properly all our functional tests are passed our build is a wonderful build without okay. any kind of logical errors okay let's say we are having a sale event some black friday event or or christmas event christmas sale in that case our user the, the amount of users will be 50 times 100 times the normal user load okay. do you think non functional testing is necessary for that to check yes, whether yes we have to do uh, performance testing in that okay yeah 
to uh, whether that application bears the more number of usage or more number of load Mm -hmm. so in that case you have to do the performance testing wonderful wonderful uh, as you said some application does not need if let's say we are creating an application only for b2b applications not b2c in that case performance testing might not be needed but mm -hmm. it's always on a safer side to go for you know to do some load testing to our application yes. wonderful model mm -hmm. now uh, what is mean by endurance testing endurance testing is also known as uh, soap testing okay. it's one of the performance testing okay. it is uh, uh, it is when the load is applied continuously for a long period of time okay. to measure the application stability and response time mm -hmm. and uh, to measure its endurance or how long it lasts yeah wonderful wonderful um now um okay we have endurance testing and that mm. fine let's say you find a defect you find a bug what will be the what will be your next steps how will you proceed further how will you raise a bug what is uh, the uh, a procedure to raise a bug it's it's a format you are asking yeah yeah how, how what what are the next steps you will follow immediate next steps you will follow as a tester immediate step, uh, the pro, uh, the format to raise the bug is a title mm -hmm. then uh, steps to reproduce precondition expected behavior uh, actual behavior mm -hmm. then it's uh, it's severity and priority okay then it's um, attachment you can attach any proof or mm -hmm. uh, for the bug mm -hmm. then we can uh, mention this environment mm -hmm. and assign Okay. after that we uh, raise a bug and we uh, add it into the uh, bug tracking tool mm -hmm. for the developed developed uh, developer to take up the bug okay yeah then we can track that in the uh, using the bug tracking tool whether he has uh, fixed it or not we can do that can you name a uh, two bug tracking tools defect tracking tools uh, uh it's one is um, jira yeah one is jira i don't know it's, the it's, more, it's most common right everyone uses jira everyone yeah. used to use jira now mm -hmm. um, many companies are shifting towards azure to microsoft azure azure, azure. yeah azure. okay okay it's also a great okay. tool and um, uh, what is mean by stlc 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 is software testing life cycle okay uh, it has some steps uh, to be followed first mm -hmm. one is understanding the requirement Mm -hmm. second is um, um writing the test plan mm -hmm. it's done by qa manager mm -hmm. then third is uh, uh identify the test scenarios and write the test scenarios okay. so uh, then uh, writing the test cases sending it for review and getting back the review and uh, proceeding then uh, getting test cases approved Okay. then storing the test cases in a repository uh, uh test repository mm -hmm. then uh, preparing traceability matrix mm -hmm. then test case execution then defect tracking okay. then after that we will uh, create test case report mm -hmm. then finally we will conduct a sprint retrospective meeting okay uh, these are the steps in stlc wonderful wonderful um now let's say we are working on a build yeah. and uh, tomorrow is our release date tomorrow mm -hmm. we are i mean tomorrow is our release date we are supposed to hand over our build as soon as we have to hand over build as soon as possible to the release team mm -hmm. uh, is there a document between the testers and the release team and what yes. doc yeah what uh, is it uh, the um uh, tra transferables uh, that is a, a part okay. of the test plan okay. uh, which contains uh, all the uh, uh, things that we uh, give to the customer at the end of the project and one of the attributes in that is release notes mm -hmm. uh, release notes uh, contains information like which all bugs is fixed which all bugs is present mm -hmm. uh, how to install how to uninstall uh, what is the version of the app oh. and uh, which all devices are compatible Wonderful. then it contains a test plan uh, oh. test case documents traceability matrix that's oh. it. so we'll okay. hand over that trace uh, transferables that okay. wonderful in the same scenario let's say we have done only 50% of our testing the okay. 50% of the testing is not been done and we are supposed to release our uh, software by tomorrow okay in that case what kind of document what, what what do testers usually do what do we give to the release team uh 
uh, we give the documents, a test, a test scenarios, uh, or no test case report. Uh, then uh, let uh, let me rephrase Let me rephrase it. Okay. Uh, you have almost done fifty percent of the. testing and okay. you have done all the basic and critical functions or you have tested all the basic and critical functions and you are confident that you can release the software but the remaining 50% of the testing is not yet done um, we might not face major major issues high priority high severity issues but still there might be bugs but we are confident that we can release the sof software okay. so we are giving our software to the release team along with a piece of document called as uh called as have you uh, heard about conditional sign off yes yes okay uh, so mail yeah okay okay what conditional sign off mail yeah uh, what is conditional sign off uh, in that we we mentioned this condition like uh, like yeah, like uh, you told like uh, we did only this much of testing so we are attaching the documents like we attach a mail or conditions with that mail along with the transferables okay okay that is a condition oh, okay. wonderful um now we have uh, some seven software testing principles some major seven software testing principles um one of the principle is called as absence of error fallacy yes. can you can you explain what what does it mean yes that means that uh, in that case uh, if the uh, software is based on if doesn't that's not based on the requirement there is no point in finding out error okay uh, or bug there is no point in raising a bug that mm -hmm. is that concept is known as absence of error fallacy that means the software is not based on the requirement okay. so there is no point in finding error okay wonderful um if you are not finding any error it does not mean that the software has met with the requirement yes exactly wonderful that's good mm okay what else fine uh can you give me i want you to give me the severity and priority of a bug and i'll tell you a bug and you have to give me the severity and priority of a bug okay let's take zoom application you know okay our zoom application uh we are finding that the zoom's logo mm. has been inverted has been mm. invert you know it's inverted okay. so okay. what kind of priority and severity would you assign to that bug severity uh, i would say it is not at all affecting the customer business workflow okay. it's just the look and feel of the app is different so okay. i would categorize the severity into minor category very good and priority also i will uh, categorize low priority okay so it has it, it can be taken up later okay but it does as you said it does not affect the customer flow it does not yes. affect the functionality of the app so severity yes. can be low when when we see if we go to amazon if you see that the amazon's logo is inverted yes do you think it affects the brand image yes yes it affects so what kind of priority can we assign to this situation uh, it, it can be high priority but its severity is low very good it can be high always severity is low. wonderful okay. wonderful radhika i mean um you answered everything wonderfully um yeah that's it. that's it radhika thank you so thank much and it was you know it was very nice uh, why was thank you so thank much thank you you are you are uh, taking performance testing class yeah yeah radhika yeah i'm planning to join after automation oh wonderful 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 see you Adi. then yeah. thank you thank you so much radhika bye bye bye